among the systems uh, that we are going to look at next, right? Um, uh, we, we began from the um, cellular membrane, you know, we went through the cytoskeleton, uh, you know, we talked about the mitochondria and then we've now come uh, to an important set of um, intracellular organelles, um, which are referred to as the endomembrane system. And they're all here. And when we see this, uh, you know, image later again, uh, you know, you will be able to recognize many of those uh, pieces as well, um, right? And um, and it's an important thought to have, uh, you know, when we think about the endomembrane system, uh, the same thought that we've been, uh, you know, we've just discussed, uh, which is, you know, why is this set up the way it is set up? Uh, you know, what kind of pros and cons this could have? Um, and why not any other way? Right. Um, and um, so one important element to consider when we think about the endomembrane system is, as the name suggests, um, it's, uh, and it, the, it's, it's made up of membranes um, and, and membranes, we are all aware, um, are made up of lipids uh, and they have proteins and other components that are embedded in them. Um, and uh, it is an internal membrane system, right? So when you look at this cell, a lot of these players, uh, you know, in 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 the cell, uh, apart from the mitochondria, um, are all part of the endomembrane system. Now, very clearly, they are membranes that are inside the cell, um, and um, which have all come together um, in very distinct ways to to make um, organelle structures, right? Which uh, now do very uh, important and unique cellular functions. Um, and as this, you know, slice of a cell shows you, um, all of this connects to the plasma membrane, right? So, so it is highly possible that the evolution of the endomembrane system and the fact that the endomembrane system exists in the form that it does, uh, um, you know, is governed or is determined by the fact uh, that the, the cell boundary or the perimeter of the cell uh, is something that evolved as a lipid membrane, right? Um, and um, so the fact that that boundary of the cell, which is the interface between the cell and its external environment uh, is made up of uh, membrane lipids, um, you know, means that things that have to be brought to the membrane delivered to the membrane uh, that need to talk with the cell membrane, um, it will greatly benefit if these are integrated in, in lipid membranes, right? Um, and so the cell has evolved this uh, complex network of membranes that begin from the nuclear envelope, uh, you know, go to the rough endoplasmic reticulum, the smooth endoplasmic reticulum, um, and, and then to the Golgi, um, and then eventually to the plasma membrane. Um, and, and these are all uh, membrane bound organelles, right? Um, and one of the reasons uh, they exist this way is because they're the interface that they need to talk to, uh, which eventually uh, influences all of cellular behavior, uh, which is the plasma membrane, um, is also made up of membranes, right? So, so this is an interesting um, uh, you know, point to consider that, um, you know, whether these membrane structures would have existed had it not been for the fact that the plasma membrane is made up of lipids. Um, so the endomembrane system is essentially uh, many internal membranes in a eukaryotic cell uh, that, um, you know, play a vital role in regulating um, synthesis, processing, um, and delivery um, of proteins and other lipids uh, to specific parts of the cell. Uh, the membranes are either in direct contact or connected via transfer of vesicles, uh, which are essentially sacs of membrane. And you're now familiar with the idea of a vesicle that is, you know, being moved around the cell. Um, and so these compartments um, are all uh, connected and are talking to each other uh, in a way uh, through uh, the fact, uh, through these through direct connections or through these vesicles. But the fact that they are all made up of membranes um, allows for uh, them to, you know, come in contact, talk to each other, communicate with each other, um, and allows things to move through them in a way that would not have been possible otherwise. 
uh, in spite of these links, these membranes have diverse functions and structures. Um, and uh, in fact, the membranes are even modified uh, uh, during life. Um, the endomembrane system effectively includes this you know, group of membranes, right? Um, it includes the en nuclear envelope, uh, which is um, then immediately connected to the rough endoplasmic reticulum. Uh, the rough endoplasmic reticulum is the site where protein synthesis is happening. Um, and it's called rough because it is lined or covered by uh, uh, ribosomes uh, that are making proteins. It's the site where um, a lot of the protein synthesis happens. Um, and from the rough endoplasmic reticulum, membranes and produce uh, and proteins that are produced in the ER uh, move as vesicles and, and come to this organ uh, organelle, which is called um, the Golgi. The Golgi is an interesting organelle uh, because the um, Golgi receives content in the form of vesicles from uh, the recycling, sorry, from the uh, rough endoplasmic reticulum um, and, and then um, processes all of this, right? So this content actually moves through the Golgi. So this is the interesting thing because this is all uh, membranes, you know, um, components begin their life in the membrane um, and, and they are carried from one membrane to another um, and they see different uh, things when they are in different compartments. Uh, so the Golgi, for example, has a um, very interesting segregation of membranes. It's, it's a stack of membranes effectively, right? One put uh, together, uh, one above the other. Um, and, and these stacks of membranes um, have very distinct um, you know, class of enzymes that are present in very different uh, compartments. So uh, there are certain enzymes that are present in one compartment, then uh, a different set of enzymes at another compartment. Now the compartmentalization here could essentially be determined by the presence or absence of many of these components. So it's not like the compartment was decided first and you said, okay, let's put the enzyme here. Uh, the fact that the enzymes are present in this, certain enzymes are present in this compartment is what also defines that compartment, right? So it moves from, uh, you know, the proteins uh, and lipids move from one compartment to the other and eventually make it out of the Golgi um, uh, in vesicles. Now, as it moves through these compartments, this is the interesting thing. Um, and, and this brings us again back to this idea uh, of things being regulated in space and time, that um, the rate at which uh, so where the vesicle is originating from, uh, the relative localization of that vesicle uh, is going to determine, uh, you know, where it uh, also goes to in some of these cases. Um, so that spatial arrangement is very vital. You have the nucleus, you have the endoplasmic reticulum, the rough and the smooth, and then you have the Golgi. And, and remember, all of this is sitting around the centrosome. And, and they're all connected and held in place by this elaborate microtubule and cyt actin cytoskeletal network, right? So, so when we talked about the fact that the cytoskeletal components are required to keep organelles in place, one of the reasons this is important is because you have, you know, this floppy cluster of um, membranes that are floating around um, and, and there has to be a way to kind of tie them and keep them together. So, you know, there are studies, for example, that uh, we in the lab have done uh, where, and others have done too, of course, uh, where uh, the Golgi, um, if you add something to break up the microtubules, the Golgi that is a nicely packed structure, you know, just breaks up um, and gets distributed throughout the cell, which essentially says that all these packets of membrane being held together in one compact structure in such a way that they can all communicate with each other uh, is mediated by the cytoskeleton, right? So the cytoskeleton uh, becomes particularly relevant to the functioning of the endomembrane system because this is just a, a, you know, a sea of lipid membranes that um, have certain unique properties that are distributed throughout the cell, right? And um, just as uh, you know, we know about the spatial arrangement that is important, 
the time something takes to go through these compartments makes a significant impact on how that uh, particular protein or lipid is processed. Right. So um, the fact that um, a protein can start from one end of the Golgi and make it through Golgi compartments and and go all the way out from the other end, um, it is seeing different enzymes as it goes through. Right. Not all enzymes will act on that particular protein. The protein has to have certain um, characteristics in its amino acids, uh, which will say this particular enzyme can actually act on that protein. Now, so there is some selectivity because of that. Then there is selectivity, of course, because of the fact that uh, how long the protein resides in one or more of these compartments could make um, a dramatic impact on how it is modified. So a protein, uh, for some reason, being stuck in one particular compartment slightly longer could change essentially the kind of modifications that it has um, and eventually can affect the functionality of the protein. So not only is where these proteins are originating and how they are moving important, uh, the rate at which they are doing this also becomes particularly important, right? So the, um, uh, the, the third member of this uh, series is the Golgi. Um, and the Golgi also, uh, you know, pinches off, uh, of course, transport vesicles, things that are carried to the plasma membrane. Uh, that, but, uh, you know, these could also give rise to lysosomes and vacuoles. Lysosomes are available um, for fusion with other vesicles and play an important role in digesting, uh, you know, components, content that is present uh, in other vesicles. Uh, there are transport vesicles which carry proteins to the plasma membrane um, and, uh, you know, come and fuse with the plasma membrane and will now deliver stuff, right? Um, and the plasma membrane obviously um, acting as, um, you know, the perimeter of the cell. Uh, but not just that, uh, it also acts as a place where uh, a lot of these components can be delivered um, and now will talk to the external environment. I think we spoke about this earlier, and this is another important um, you know, thought to have, that when proteins are made, remember, that finally when they have to be delivered, right? this protein uh, essentially has to be present in a form uh, that can be seen very clearly on the outside. So, uh, you know, I'm going to use this coin and just illustrate this where, uh, you know, if the, if the coin is, um, you know, to be displayed uh, like this, right? Um, and this is uh, where it is. I hope you can see it, right? Um, and this is how it should be displayed on the plasma membrane. Imagine when it comes in a vesicle, uh, it's actually inside the vesicle, most of this protein. So what is eventually going to be out is actually in. And if the protein is a transmembrane protein and there is a part of it sticking out at the other end, uh, you know, uh, this end is going to be inside, right? So you have this protein that's in a vesicle, it comes and fuses with the plasma membrane and opens up. And now the protein is present here in such a way that it can talk to things from the outside, right? So remember the orientation, when the protein is synthesized, uh, the orientation is such that things that are eventually meant to be out are on the inside, right? And, and this is how it moves as, as vesicles from one compartment to the other, all the way out to the plasma membrane, right? So, so that's the arrangement of the endomembrane system. Um, and um, this works in the context of the plasma membrane um, and uses this um, cytoskeletal network to drive everything. So even though this image, for example, shows the endomembrane system and all these compartments, uh, you know, talking to each other, none of that would be possible without the cytoskeleton. So on top of all of this, now you have to mentally superimpose the image of the cytoskeleton um, and the architecture of these endomembrane systems, the, their ability to talk to each other, um, you know, and carry stuff, process stuff, is all mediated because of the cytoskeleton, okay? And that's why these two components are very, um, you know, integral to each other's, uh, uh, you know, role in cells um, and work very closely with each other uh, to drive cellular function, right? So in, in the interest of time, we will stop here.
next time we will look at each of these components uh, in a bit more detail um, and talk a little bit about um, you know endoplasmic reticulum uh, the golgi uh, and all the other vesicular structures that come out from the golgi uh, right so we'll stop here